All righty, welcome back. Uh, second episode of 2021. Second. Second episode, yeah. Uh, welcome back to The Daily Show. I did say I'm gonna start calling it The Daily Show now. Right. You guys see it as the title right there. Not the ability to learn anymore. That's the name of the channel. And today is the 12th of January. I'm JR. Why do I even have to introduce myself? This is Joe. Second Daily Show, <laughs> the second day of the week. What? My And vote. the second week of the year month. Yes. And the year too. Uh, yes. That's the second week of the year. Second week of the year? Yeah, it is. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Wait, no, it's the third week actually. Because the first week was actually the first. But you don't really count it as the, no, that was the still, first week of January, no, 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 even no, no, though it's... No, 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 it still counts a week. Really? Yeah, it still counts. I thought that week falls in December. So this will be actually the third week of third January. Week. Yeah. Okay. But for today, guys, uh, what are we going to be talking about, uh, about today? We'll you talk us, about... Right? Yeah, we'll, tell us. We'll talk about things that starts with the letter B. B as in boy. Boy, yeah. Because remember, I'm doing alphabetical now. My uh, first episode of 2021 starts, we starts with the letter A, right? Yeah, you know we have uh, 26 letters in alphabet. Right? Yes. You only cover 26 weeks. And yeah. It's pretty sure, I'm pretty sure there's 52 weeks in a year. That's true. Wait, 26 times 2 is what? Uh, 52. Whoa, that works. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing. There's a lot of things that we can talk about on uh, yeah. on each letter. So right, right, no matter right. if we uh, go back after we finish the whole alphabet, alphabet, right. and we go back to A, yeah. there's a lot of things that we can still talk about. You have a whole dictionary of words. Exactly. <laughs> and animals and plants. Right, you know? right, right. All right. So let's start with our first uh, part of the show. Observance. Daily observance. First up, National Pharmacist Day. Right. Uh, pharmacists are health professionals who supply medication to patients according to prescriptions written by medical practitioners. Right. Uh, they are responsible for ensuring that all medication is supplied within the law. Right. That's important. Of course, of course. Uh -huh. um, and to check the suitability of the med medication dispensed. Right. Uh, they also offer advice on how um, on, on how to take the medication. Mm -hmm. um, Treatments and uh, to for minor injuries and illness uh, and answer patients' questions on healthcare matters. Right. So I think you have an idea what a uh, yes pharmacy I've pharmacist been, is. I've been working in pharmacy for a while now. But you're not uh, a pharmacist. No, I'm not a pharmacist. Not a pharmacist. So, uh, but I know the inner workings of the pharmacist work, right? Mm -hmm. And the one thing I feel so bad about, so sorry for the pharmacist is. Doctor's writing. <laughs> I kind of figured. When, yeah. when, when I'm like reading these uh, writings from the doctors, right? I cannot understand any of it. But over oh, time, man. I start to understand these keywords. And I just decipher it. But I'm like so impressed how pharmacists, right, are able to to re to really decipher these. Know, yeah, to decipher. Squiggles, uh, chicken scratch of these doctors. Well, I think it might have something to do with what they study when it comes to pharmacy. You right. know, you um, have, uh, like I said, you have. Common initials, right? Mm -hmm. When you see the word um, BID, so right. they know take twice per day. Okay. So there's common things that you can just uh, recognize. And even the name of the medication. Medication, medication. Yeah, there, uh, there should be. I mean, there's always, when it comes to medications, for those who don't know, there's going to be a generic right. name. There's and then generic, there's a brand the name. So the generic name is always going to be the scientific. Like the scientific. scientific. Yeah. There you go. So when it comes to that, right, uh, we have medication where. Pharmacists can, let's say the pharmacist cannot read it, right? They can read the first three letters. Mm -hmm. They will either confirm with the doctor, but they under, sometimes they understand what the patient uh, is taking. So they can okay, infer, so they, they can infer what the patient's already right. taking. Right, so they do make right. an educated exactly. yes. conclusion or guess. But usually, well, it's always better to confirm with the doctor. Some, okay. some, some professional, professional pharmacists, they can just go right away. But when it comes to like writing, it's too fully ineligible. To Ineligible. Not ineligible. Uh, not <laughs> legible. Not it. legible. Okay. <laughs> they had to really call the doctors confirm like, what do you guys write? <laughs> and you know, are you sure you should want to give this to the patient? So sometimes the pharmacist will butt heads with the doctors. Sometimes the doctors don't know what they're prescribing. Oh, the pharmacist okay. will tell you, hey, this patient will have an allergic reaction to this. Let's switch to the generic instead of the brand name. Okay. Hey, there you this, go. this patient has uh, their, what do you call it, their insurance doesn't cover the branding, we switch to the, the generic. So they actually advise they the have, doctor they have too? Advice, yes. Okay, so um, 
you got you you you, you gotta you gotta be aware that doctors do not know everything. Okay, no, no. even though humans, humans. yeah, and even though you could consider them as a, uh, I guess the, the the top of the hierarchy of the medical right. industry, it doesn't mean that they know a lot of things. They, in fact, they actually need help with a lot of stuff. So doctors, they learn a lot of field in the medical field, right? Mm -hmm. All the pharmacists are more focused Focus on, on the, the medication. medication aspect, correct. So yeah, more and drugs, yeah, like the uh, side effects. Side effects, the uh, right amount of doses. Right amount of do doses, strength, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, interaction with other medications, mm -hmm. allergies, stuff like that. Yeah. So there they have go. to be very cognizant. They have to be very aware of what they are giving to the patient. That's true, and uh, yeah, at the end of the day, they are uh, you know they're working with right. uh, with people's lives, so that's really important for them to be as accurate and precise mm -hmm. as possible. Um, you might be surprised to know that there are people that uh, are actually uh, there are the, the people behind the invention of two famous sodas <laughs> were pharmacists. If you guys have, that. if you guys don't know yet, all right, uh, let me let, let me tell you these two people. In 1885, uh -huh. in uh, Waco, Texas. A young Brooklyn-born pharmacist named Charles Alderton uh -huh. invented the new uh, soda that would soon become as, if you guys know the guess, but I'll give you the answer, Dr. Pepper. Dr. Yeah, Pepper. Dr. Pepper. Uh, the carbonated beverage was marketed as having a unique flavor all its own. Whoa. Uh, well, we're not stopping there because <laughs> a year after 1886, Coca-Cola followed through. And I here I was thinking that Coca-Cola was like the the, the pioneer of soda, but I guess Dr. Pepper was a, a year early. Whoa. Yeah, uh -huh. okay, that's cool actually. So Coca Cola was invented by Dr. John P uh, Pemberton. Pemberton? Yeah, a pharmacist from Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, that's where, that's the main headquarters for Coca Cola, it's in Atlanta. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> According to the Coca Cola company, Pember uh, Pemberton developed the syrup uh, for the famed beverage, uh -huh. uh, which was sampled at a local Jacobs pharmacy. So I guess they have it, they like. Reported that this drink has some healing properties. Drink this, and you feel better. Yes, which I actually strongly disagree because when it comes to soda, um, uh, at, at least when I where I grew up in the Philippines, soda is more of a, a treat, yeah. a dessert, like candy and stuff. It's not, it's, it, you know, it's uh, not a thirst quencher. Actually, if you want thirst quencher, you go water. You know, you it's know? weird, but there's a medication that I kind of like taking. It's a uh, pepto bismol. It has a double gum flavor. Oh. <laughs> I feel like it's like a dessert for me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, if it's a medication. You got to be careful with that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And um, so those are two uh, pharmacists who invented, I mean, soda. Um, but uh, believe it, also, believe it or not, Benjamin Franklin. Yeah. One of the founding fa fathers what? was a pharmacist. Yeah, before he was uh, ever a uh, you know a salesman, um, he was working as a clerk in a neighbor neighborhood mercantile store, uh, which he uh, dispensed medicines, herbs, and various uh, curatives. Oh, no, I did not know that. Actually. Yeah. So I learned three things today: Coca Cola, Dr Pepper, made by and pharmacists, then, and then Benjamin, Benjamin Franklin. Franklin was a pharmacist. Being a, well, you know, back in the day, uh, you know, these famous people or the people that are known in history, they have a lot of things going on. You know. Right. Uh, they could be uh, politicians at, at the same time. They are scientists yeah. or businessmen and everything like that. So it's very common. They came together in the United States. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, which is really nice to have uh, a lot of knowledge for a lot of things. Yeah. That's what they call founding fathers. You have a good foundation. Exactly. There you go. Right. Uh, anyways, do you have a friend or family member that is a pharmacist? Uh, if you do, you know, try to greet them today and thank them for their service they provide. Giving you a healthy. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, next up, it is something that is probably not uh, prescribed by your <laughs> pharmacist. Chicken curry day. I don't think they would prescribe food. So no, yeah. no, no, that's true. National Chicken Curry Day. Ooh, Joe, you like curry? I love curry, but not the chicken one because you don't eat meat. Uh, You're okay with it. When I had it, it was good. Okay, wait, when he has it, I love chicken curry. What about you guys? If you guys like it, leave it in the comment section below, okay? Right. Anyways, chicken curry is uh, common in the Indian subcontinent, Southeast Asia, Great Britain, as well as in the uh, Caribbean or Caribbean. So I think the Indian population that moved to uh, the UK, to Great Britain, they the, brought along. Curry. Yeah, uh-huh. And well, people just, the, the British people. Oh uh, yeah, uh, came tried it, tasted it, and like, hey, this, this is pretty good. It tastes good, you know, full of spice. 
not spicy. You can make it spicy, but uh, the thing that stands out is the you know the, the spice. The spice. That's yeah. why that's why it's really explored a little bit of spice. Exactly. Right. It was the spice warp back in the day. You spice know? warp. It's, it's not. It's not the gold. I mean, gold is one thing, but they're actually trying spice to. Spice warp. It has some spice, but like they have the way gold too. Oh yeah, yeah, there you go. Gold. Yeah, there you go. Sauna. So, yeah, so it's not just all about gold back in the day. You yeah, know, yeah, it's yeah, spice. Nice, so. um, the tea. Or Boston Tea Party, you know? The, yeah. So it's like there's a lot of things that are big back in the day, too. Okay, anyways, a typical curry from the Indian subcontinent consists of uh, chicken stewed in an onion right. uh, and tomato based sauce. Whoa. Uh, it's flavored. You guys don't see my. Because I'm very massive, I'm drooling. <laughs> when, oh, I, when I read it, I'm sorry. I'm, like, just reading the, reading the ingredients is just making me it's hungry, you know? Oh, it's man. Water ingredients. Flavored with ginger. Oh man, garlic, garlic. my favorite. Garlic. Tomato puree. What tomato? Uh, if you wanted uh, spicy, chili peppers and variety of spices. You know, often uh, including turmeric, uh, cumin, coriander, cinnamon, and I think the last one is uh, cardamom. Cardamom. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And then outside South Asia, uh, curry chicken is often made with the uh, pre-made spice mix already. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, because like it's Yeah, because in our country, that's you know, it's it's already a powdered uh, mix. So do you usually eat uh, when I eat curry? I usually eat with a side of rice. Oh yeah, that's yeah. true. I think it's well. You can eat by itself, right? As as a, as a Filipino, that's I mean, because rice is. A it's a staple. It's a staple. It's food. a staple. So, and then curry has a sauce, right? And uh, the the purpose of rice is to dilute the so good re- sauce. the the richness yeah, of yeah. Uh, uh, the flavor of a dish. Yeah, yeah. To make it balanced. So, yeah. You don't be like overwhelmed by the flavors. You have a little bit of salt. Or not salt. But you have some rice. It's like mm-hmm. bread. Compliments. Yeah. Uh huh. So I think some of uh, some of the people eat uh, curry with bread, uh-huh. uh, non bread, for non-bread, example. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, as w- w- when I grew up, well, we eat it with rice. So <laughs> I know. Well, you know what? Let's let, let, let's move let's on. Forget it. Forget it. All right. We'll get it again. Okay. After after chicken curry, uh-huh. you know, maybe the next one is uh, something you might want to get after eating chicken curry. Yeah, that is the spices on your mouth. I don't know. If this will. Oh yeah. You Imagine a hot tea day. You're you're hotty. No, it's yeah. hot tea. Oh, okay. Not what? hotty. Oh. Hot tea day. Okay, there we okay, go. Okay. 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 Uh, the drinking tea of tea may date back almost 5,000 years ago. Whoa. Yeah, according to the legend, it was first drunk in China around 2737 BCE uh, when Emperor Shen Nong accidentally uh, imbibed it. Imbibed it? Wait. Yeah, uh-huh. after tea leaves blew into his boiling water. Yeah. So basically he was, the emperor was like just so relaxing like, the day, he was just boiling some water and some leaves fell in. Yeah, according to the legend, uh, it, it, it was made by accident. Yeah. Um, tea went from being a uh, medicinal beverage to a casual beverage around 300 CE. Right. Um, it has long been tied to uh, Britain, but it wasn't until the 17th century that it was that it became popular there. So yeah. Uh, at that time, it was rather expensive and taxed by the government. Yeah. And yeah. you guys remember uh, Boston the uh, Boston Party. Tea Party? We talked yeah, about it tax. last year, yeah. very recently, back at. Uh, December, no, you know. We talked about recently, but it didn't happen recently. Well, it didn't happen recently, but we, yeah, we talked about it in this show. We in talked about show. it, yeah, uh, just a month ago, though it was like a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, by the late 19th century, it was popular uh, with the British social classes. So I guess it also became a, uh, a social status. Status. Uh, status. Wow. Yeah. It's like, do you want some tea? I mean, if you're, you're. Am I doing the British accent right? Do you want some tea? Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> so I guess you have to have like uh, a stove, gas, gas. You actually heat up the tea. So that's something like a normal person, a mm-hmm. person doesn't have. Like, kind of like till it. Oh, that's true. Yeah, back in the day. Right. Um, what is the only drink that is more popular than tea? Uh, four out of five Americans. Uh, drink tea and the United States is the third largest importer of tea in the world after Russia and Pakistan uh, with consumption continuing to rise. Uh, tea drinking is most widespread in Turkey and Ireland. Uh, today, um, today's holiday is dedicated to just you know hot tea. So just in case, uh, I can't celebrate if you have the iced tea. I prefer iced tea. Well, yeah, if you do prefer it. Uh, so that's, we another day. We prefer my yeah. service. 
Well, that would count if you, you know, if you try to celebrate the hot tea with the iced tea. Obviously. It'd be hot. It'd be hot. Yeah. And the true tea comes from the uh, plant called Camellia sinensis. I hope I pronounced that right. But that's, yeah, yes. yeah, that is scientific. Uh, the main types of teas are black, green, white, dark, yellow, and oolong. Oolong. We talked about that last week. Yeah, last week we talked about that. Uh, Joel talked about that. Folks, yes. Yeah. They're, oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh huh. They all come from the same plant. Uh, their differences lie in how they are processed. Right. There you go. The art. The art. Yeah. Uh huh. So um, tea leaves begin to oxidize after they are picked. Uh, white tea is the least oxidized. Green tea is more oxidized, and the black tea is the most oxidized. So the more, so basically, the more oxidized it becomes, the more darker it becomes in color. Mm, okay. Same, same thing like metal when it gets oxidized, it becomes more dark. Uh, it gets darker the more um, oxida oxidation you have. So like, you do. when you think of white tea, right, it's the least oxidized, so it's mm -hmm. white more. Right. You're moving forward to the color, uh, color spectrum, you get green, darker, then you have black, which is darker. Yeah, because it, it absorbs oxidized. all the light. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, another reason why tea is uh, became really famous be um, be become a thing, a big thing, because Tea has numerous health benefits too. So the thing is like this, back then, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't have any way to filter out the water. So you have a bunch of bad bacteria, right. and some uh, dirt in it. Mm -hmm. And it can cause a lot of problems, especially with the bacteria. That's However, true. when you boil the water, you're killing the bacteria. And when you put some tea in, you're just poisoning the hot water. Yeah, so, so people who drink tea usually are more healthier because they're actually <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. But uh, if you boil the uh, if you boil the water, uh, right. basically the bacteria are already dying, and you might you might wonder, well, why do you have to put tea for if the the water is already? Well, uh, drinking hot water itself is not a pleasant experience. Well, that's true. But um, other than that, uh, you know, it has a high concentration of flavonoids. All the leaves? Yeah. Uh -huh. oh, okay. okay. Uh, those are bioactive compounds with uh, antioxidant properties that may help neutralize uh, free radicals that cause chronic disease wow. diseases. Yeah. So, uh, you know, studies show that tea may promote uh, heart health. So besides, you know, when I'm sick, right? Maybe because my pharmacist made the soda. I'm not going to drink soda. I'm not going to drink hot tea when I'm sick. Oh, but okay. Yeah, well, no, right? that's good for you. Just because they say, oh, it's Dr. Pepper, it has health benefits. I'm going to drink tea. I'm going to drink tea. Yeah, hot tea. But well, actually, hot tea is perfect, uh, especially in cold weather, you know? We're yeah. still in the cold season it right now. It keeps yourself warm. It keeps your body warm. Right. So there you have it. Those are our observances for today. Wow. We are moving on to today the Today in history. history. What happened today in history? You tell me. Well, yes, 11 years ago. Oh. I uh, tried my best to look at the uh, look at a like a uh, brighter side of history. Yeah, a more positive side of history. But we have to. Well, there are going to be you know history will uh, come in both ways, yes. uh, a positive one and good not so bad. good ones. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, but uh, for today in history, unfortunately, 11 years ago, in 2010, a massive earthquake strikes Haiti. I remember this, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. Haiti is dev uh, devastated by a massive earthquake and it drew an outpouring of support from around the globe. And so I guess if we're talking about something good, that is the good part so right there. You the thing know, is also good is, to help them. Help even though this uh, event was really catastrophic and really bad, right? mm -hmm. we had to understand how the earthquake, earthquake affected these nations, and we had to build the infrastructure. The building is a little bit more resilient, more resistant to earthquakes. Mm -hmm. So it is a learning lesson. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, uh huh. Um, and again, like I said, uh, the uh, the good part of uh, this tragedy uh -huh. is that it drew an outpouring of support from around the world. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. But the small donation has yet to fully recover. Yeah. You know, it takes time. It takes, it takes time. time. Especially when you don't have a. <laughs> Good system to rebuild as fast as we can. Like, That's true. More, more of like a more wealthier nation like the United States. Mm -hmm. yes. um, it happened in 2010. Uh, earthquake struck just before 5 p.m. So they're about to go eat dinner and go sleep. That's like that's not the one thing you want. Yeah, I think yeah, that time people are really not expecting anything. Yeah. You know, they're ready to go sleep. The tremor was felt as far as as far away as uh, Cuba and Venezuela. Well, so. Lower half of the yeah, but the Caribbean. epicenter of the 7.0 magnitude quake was just 16 miles away from Port-au-Prince. Is that like the, I think that's the capital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, eight aftershocks, that's eight aftershocks, you know, lot, followed the same day and at least 52 were recorded over the next two weeks. Oh, that's, so, that's terrifying. Yeah, right? they're talking about... Exactly. So, 
Again, earthquakes don't just happen, uh, you know, in some places it could last for that long, you know. Um, the, the effects were obviously catastrophic. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the capital's hospitals, as well as three facilities run by Doctors Without Borders, mm -hmm. uh, sustained serious damage. And then Port-au-Prince Airport and, uh, ha well, as well as Port-au-Prince Airport and then Seaport. Seaport. That's really bad because, like, I don't know if it's to help, right? Exactly, yeah. You need, you need to have... Uh, I mean, you can have helicopters, but like for bigger inventory, Aircraft, cargo stuff, you need cargos, good runway, yeah. yeah, especially seaports too. The seaports you right? You oh, have, for sure, you yeah. Have, like supply ship docking, because you can store more, yeah, support in there. So yeah, that's really you got crippled. Yeah. The, uh, the yeah. Uh, basically, the airport, uh, seaport, they were rendered inoperable. Yeah. So that was that, that was really bad. Um, another bad thing that happened was telecom services were greatly so affected. So you can't call, you can't Skype, you can't site. video? No, no, because call like... Anyone? Wow. Yeah, because of telecommunication. Bad. So you, they're basically like almost isolated. They, Yeah, they were, wow. yeah, uh-huh. Okay. Uh, major roads were rendered impassable oh. uh, and close to uh, 300,000 buildings, most of which were residents were damaged beyond repair. So yeah, 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 well, when, when you think about, when you, when you think about car, it's... What, what, uh, what do you call that term? When you can't repair the car anymore? Uh, Inoperable. No, no, no. I mean, uh, junker car. Junk car. The, 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 I forgot. There's what a is term. It? What is it? Kill the, the, there's a term for that. That when you get into an accident, right? And then you, it, they can't uh, uh, repair it, so they. You don't repair. Yeah, but there's a term. Joe, you gotta help me with that. Yeah, I you, forgot. You, you, uh, keep, keep describing. Keep describing. I, I, man, I forgot. But I'm probably gonna remember we'll look it, it later. Up. If you guys know, put it in the comments. Oh, right there. Total wreck. Oh, it's a wreck. There you go. Yeah, so, like total wreck. What do you say? It's total wreck. Okay. Yeah, right? <laughs> I, for, I can't believe I forgot that word. Well, we, we got it. <laughs> uh, the National Assembly building and the Port au Prince Cathedral were also destroyed. Ooh. So basically, uh, you know, it's a, it's a terrible earthquake. Yeah, yeah. You know. But again, at the, uh, you know, to show the light uh, in this dark tunnel, uh, countries like the world. US, yeah, like that's the world, the countries around the world got together to help them out. Despite the differences, we come to help. And that's what's actually good about being a human, you know, being, being us. We, uh, no matter what uh, difference we have in culture, in in uh, in other things, yeah. you know, if one human needs help, we uh, we gotta be there. Yeah, help your fellow help each other. There we go. Okay, next for our notable figure born today, we got Joe Frazier. Not me. No, your last name is V. Oh. It's not F. It's mm -hmm. Joe Frazier right there. What is he? Who is Joe Frazier? For Joe Frazier, first know. of all, uh, was born in 1944. Oh. He was an American boxer. He was actually a gold Olympic heavyweight in 1964. Wow. Undisputed world heavyweight champion in between 1970 and 1973. Three years, three-year reign. Uh, born in Beaufort, South Carolina. Mm. There you go. Uh, uh, he emerged as the top contender in the late 1960s. Defeating multiple opponents en route uh, to become undisputed heavyweight champion in the 1970s. Nice. And then in 1971, he actually defe uh, defeated Muhammad Ali by unanimous decision in a highly anticipated fight of the century. Because well, Muhammad Ali is not. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's the big thing. Top. Yeah. The cream of the crop. And if Joe Frazier beat the top, you are the top of the top. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh -huh. Wow, that's amazing, actually. So there you go. Joe Frazier, our notable figure born today. Happy birthday, sir. All right, so we're going to be talking about the place of the week. Uh, last week was Taiwan. Taiwan. We're going to be talking about... Oh, up uh, north. We're moving up north. Well, side. we're going to be uh, talking about Congo, actually. Oh, it's Congo? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, more south. Right? Yeah, because I forgot to <laughs> remove the, uh, okay. the part of the script. We're moving south. Yeah, so Republic of the Congo. Uh, you know me. I talk about the uh, national symbols. Right. Okay. Uh, first off, first of all, first off, uh, national animal. Okay. Okapi. The uh, National Animal of Democratic Republic of, Longo, of Congo sorry, is a copy. It's sometimes called the j forest giraffe or forest uh, zebra. So this animal is a, a copy of a giraffe. I wouldn't... I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a copy of a giraffe. No, no, no. no. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> I was too slow. I didn't... <laughs> got you. No, Joe. I got JR. You, you should have been doing your puns in my episode. <laughs> it's a copy it's a, of a giraffe. Stop repeating. Okay. <laughs> it's all right. But one of its lesser known names is the African unicorn. Mm -hmm. Even though, uh, you know, it doesn't look like a unicorn. First of all, it's not a horse. Mm -hmm. So it has the same family as the giraffe. Mm -hmm. um, actually, 
um, the okapi and the giraffe were the only existing members of the same family. Like, mm. Yeah, like the uh, uh, giraffidae, I guess, if that's you pronounce it, that family. Same family, like cousins, so kind of like that. Yeah, but there are nothing, uh, no other animals. Oh, wow. Yeah, like for example, you know, the cat family, right? right. You got lions, you got... Uh, Bobcats, mountain lions. Yeah, tigers, cheetahs, leopards. Yeah, uh -huh. but for their family, it's only them and the okapi. Oh, okay. Yeah, a, a, a very small family, I guess. It makes sense because the giraffe is in the Africa too, and these guys are in Africa too. That's true, yeah. 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 Uh, usually found in the rainforest of the Congo region, uh -huh. this beautiful animal okapi uh, lives in the northern, central, and eastern parts of the Congo. Okay. Uh, the okapi was unknown to science until 1901, uh -huh. when British explorer Sir Harry Hamilton Johnston, with letter T, uh, sent the first bits of hiding to the British Museum. So basically, the height of the animal. The height, of, yeah, they're not the hiding that they're hiding. No, yeah. the, the height of, of the, the yeah. Uh -huh. in... Yeah. And of course, you know, there's uh, believe it or not, there's still a lot of animals that are not discovered, especially under the sea. You know, just because of our current uh, can't technology. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. I, I know okapi is in land, but it just kind of sh shows you that there's a lot of animals out there. That sometimes they get ex extinct, and we don't even know. You know, there's a lot of things that we can still discover. Right. Uh, the okapi has a coat of chocolate and reddish brown much um, contrast with the uh, white horizontal stripes uh, on their front and hind legs. Very zebra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it has a long skull, large black eyes, and very long purplish tongue, oh. like a giraffe. You guys saw uh, giraffe uh, tongue. tongue. Yeah. yeah. Exceptionally, females are larger than males. Uh, interesting, it has, interestingly, it has a very large tongue uh -huh. and able to reach its eyes and ears. Can you do that? <laughs> no, I can't, can't even reach my nose with my hands. Uh, the male okapis have horns covered with skin, uh -huh. but females have bumps instead of horns. Uh -huh. So that's how you can tell uh, so more between a male okapi and a female okapi. Uh, yeah, now if it's a bump, it's a female. Yeah. Uh, they are usually active during the afternoon and in the early evening. Same day, I like sleeping all day. Okay. I'm there a male okapi. <laughs> the next stop is. Uh, my, my next symbol is not the flower because uh, when I was doing the research, it's kind of uh, very confusing to me. Uh, every time I do the research for the National Flower of uh, Congo, uh -huh. it's showing multiple. Okay. So I kind of settled with a different one, which is the uh, bird, the national bird. Ooh, it kind of looks like a peacock. Well, you're close. It's what? a Congo peafowl. Oh, peafowl. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So Congo peafowl is uh, the national bird of... Uh, the Congo. I mean, it's the name, well, Congo people, yeah, right? Yeah. It's a colorful bird and the only true pheasant native to Africa. Mm. Um, this is why people usually call it African peafowl. Okay. Uh, this bird is also known as the as the mabulu okay. by the local people. Uh, this is one of the three species of peafowl from Asia. Uh, from those three species of peafowl, uh -huh. this bird is the most different one. Uh, they have much shorter tail without. Uh, how do I pronounce that one? Ocelli? or Ocelli, yeah. About yeah, 23 to 25 uh, centimeters. Hmm. Um, this bird is only found, obviously, again in the Congo. Um, yeah, mainly in its eastern half. Okay. Uh, this uh, this is unique because other types of peafowl can be found outside of their natural habitat. So they have this. Region they have a specific region for place. These guys. Yeah. Uh, lowland rainforest is the bird's overall habitat. Uh, but it seems to uh, prefer specific areas within the forest. Hey, I mean, they, they're very picky about the where they want to live. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, for the national sport, uh, soccer is soccer. their main sport. You soccer know? is like well, popular everywhere. But, but yeah, surprised. I guess except here, do you? This is not as popular as no, national, no. Uh, national as uh, American football or baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basketball. The picture you're seeing right now is the picture of the Congo national football team, oh. which represents the Republic of Congo in men's association of football, huh? and is governed by the Congolese uh, Football Federation. They never qualified for the World Cup. There's always a chance. <laughs> yeah, but did win. Here's the thing: huh? did win the Africa Africa Cup of Nations in 1972. Uh, they also won the All Africa Games Football Tournament in 1965, and the team also represents both the FIFA and the uh, Confederation of, um, of African Football, or the CAF. Yeah. In terms of the continent, right? They're like dominant in yeah. continent Africa. Got it. Cool, cool. Good. So that's what I got for the uh, place of the week, uh, Republic of Congo. 
All right, let's move on, JR. Okay, stuff of the day. What do we have? Things that uh, that such a letter B. B. Ta da! <laughs> Animal of the day, Babirusa. Babirusa. All right, found in the swamps and rainforests of Indonesian islands, uh -huh. Babirusas have barrel shaped bodies balanced on delicate deer like legs. Oh. You know? That's so weird. The body is so big, but they have like It's like deer legs. Right? You gotta work on your legs, man. <laughs> uh, skipping leg work. <laughs> skipping leg for days, yeah. Babirusas are wild members of the pig family. Um, they differ from uh, other pigs in several ways. Okay, first the snouts are not as specialized as those of other pigs. So it's not really good at sniffing stuff. Well, not as good. They not still use it to sniff, but not as good. good. Um, Babirusas also have a complex two chambered stomachs. I have one stomach. I know. I well, I mean, it'd be great to have two. It's, well, it says two chambers, so I think it's still one oh, stomach. Oh, so like, uh, it has sections. Sections, sections yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Cool. Cool. Which are more uh, reminiscent of the digestive systems of sheep and other ruminants, so, other than those of the fellow pigs. Like, uh, like cows. Okay. I'm aggressive. Cow, cows, goats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Scientists uh, think Babirusas branched off from the rest of the pig family early in its, uh, you know, evolution. So, kind of so weird. Well, tell remember? Me tell me why. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, well, why is this like remember? A deer and a pig? Yeah, that's why. Because, uh, well, I cannot tell you why, but I can tell you what Babirusa means. What the name mean? actually came from from that. It's called. Pig deer. Oh, that's so unoriginal. <laughs> that's so unoriginal. Babirusa mean, means pig deer in Malay language. So, Malaysia, right? I mean, that's what basically how they describe it. It's, it has a barrel body like a pig, and legs are like a deer. That's so weird. <laughs> it's thought that the Sulawesi people gave the Babirusa its moniker because of the large canines remind, remind them of um, the antlers. Oh. Uh, but the name could also reflect of uh, in how the Babirusa combines slender deer-like legs and a multi-chambered stomachs with its um, other more like uh, pig-like oh, character okay. or so traits. It shows like similarity between the two animals, deer and the pig. Mm -hmm. Let's combine it. Pig deer. <laughs> pig deer. I mean, I think it sounds better if it's the uh, deer pig. No? Uh, it is. It I mean, it's more uh, it's more pig than deer, so I say pig to the first. No, well, well, when you describe something, right? At least in the English language, you but because like this is alphabetical, you want it to be described alphabetical. No, no, no. I mean, I'm saying like uh, I guess in English, when you describe something, you say the adjective first before the noun, right? So if you say pig deer, oh, yeah, it's a deer that looks like a pig, no, something like that. Then when you say deer pig, it then it's, like, a, it's a pig. <laughs> then, no, it seems like you're writing a letter to a pig. That's true, yeah. <laughs> like, that's, why, that's why. That's why. Dear Mr. Pig. That, no, that's why it didn't sound deer. right. Pig deer works. Pig deer, yeah. Pig deer. Uh, if you're wondering about their diet, they are omnivorous, meaning they uh, eat both plants and uh, meat. Right. Yeah. Um, diet includes leaves, fruits, berries, nuts, mushrooms, barks, insects, fish, and small animals. Actually, even the smaller babirusas. Sometimes. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Babirusas use their hooves to dig for roots and insects, insect larvas, uh -huh. or why did I say larvas? Larvae, 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 in the ground, uh -huh. and are also able to support them in two uh, on, on their two back feet to stand up and feed on higher oh, leaves. So they get on the hind legs, they can reach up. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, mm -hmm. but as far as the food is concerned, they're not really picky. <laughs> I'm pretty sure pigs are not piggy. They just eat that, whatever. That's true. Do you see food? They eat it. Oh, yeah, plants, plants, and uh, meat. Garbage. All right. <laughs> Plant of the day. We got the uh, buffalo berry. That doesn't look like a buffalo. It's not a combination of a buffalo. It's, well, no, of course not. It's not. That one was a pig beard. Don't tell me this is a no, it's, buffalo. No, it's, it's buffalo. No more. It's buffalo. It's well, well, let's see. Buffalo oh, okay. bears are also known as the rabbit bears. Oh my gosh, is it not an animal? It's a rabbit bear. Wait, does it even look like a rabbit too? Jar. <laughs> or Nebraska uh, currant or Correct. current. Yeah. yeah. Uh, these are stone fruit or droops that are usually red but can be yellow. Okay. They are edible and can be eaten uh, fresh or dried. Uh, they are quite tart, though they will uh, sweeten up a bit if they are um, hit with frost. So they cool down. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Like I didn't know that. Like there are fruits that uh, will taste sweet when they cool down. Uh, those fruits can be used in a variety of recipes, like something that you should be familiar with: jams, uh, jellies, and of course sauces. Holy sauces! Yeah, they're like cranberries. Now you can get jam or yeah. Uh -huh. 
Okay, so uh, uh, now some nutrition facts about this fruit. Um, researchers who collected wild buffalo berries in North and South Dakota found the tiny red, slightly sour fruits are rich in lycopene. lycopene yeah. It's an anti uh, antioxidant that appears to lower the uh, risk of certain types of cancer. Mm. Yeah. Uh, as well as an acidic compound called the, uh, all right, good luck to me saying that, methyl lycopenoate. Penoate, yeah. Penoate. Oh, that was close. 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 <laughs> Let me say Methyl that again. Methyl lycopenoate. Methyl lycopenoate. Yes. There you go. That's good. That can be used as a natural food colorant, so you don't need artificial food, 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 food colorant. No, no, no. Yeah. It's more natural, yes. Uh, they are a type of pigment called uh, carotenoids. No, no, hold on. Yeah. Did I pronounce that right? Okay, thank you, Joe. Uh, that give fruits and vegetables like tomatoes and carrots their red and orange colors. Uh, the fruits. This fruit is also a good source of other... Uh, Phenolic antioxidants. Okay. Um, but the compounds are responsible for their uh, tartness and generally thought to play a, a role in preventing cancer and slowing cellular aging. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, but it doesn't like, mean that. Like yeah, meat is usually there. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that if you eat this, you're not. You, no, no, you're not gonna have this. Reducing the risk. Yeah, yeah, you're reducing the risk. Yeah. Nothing is like a clear cut. Like you do this. No. Yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's nice to know that there are fruits that are capable of you know, like, providing these. Um, People say like prevention is the best medicine. Yeah, that's true. All right. So letter B, art of the day would be next, or for in my case, album art. You know, I focus on album, album art. Better music. be good. Better be good, JR. Oh, JR. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't, I can't do good because why? Because bad starts with letter B. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. What do we have? Album art of the day. We have bats. <laughs> Bad by Michael Jackson. Yeah, I actually, oh, I kind of covered it, but it's right there. Wait, it's written on the title. Because it's Bad Michael. <laughs> bad Michael. Yeah, it, that looks like it's Bad Michael. No, what it's meant was well, bad was the uh, the name of the album right. and by Michael Jackson, but you don't see the Jackson. Part. 1987, right? Hey, don't focus on the text below, but focus on the text. That right, is the yeah. album art. Actual album art. Right there. That, that's part of the album art already. I forgot to change it. So, Bad is the seventh album by American singer Michael Jackson. King of Pop. Yes. It was last week. We just talked about uh, the King of Rock and Roll. Elvis Presley. Okay, now I talked about the uh, King of Pop. Uh, it was released on August 31, 1987, year when I was born, by Epic Records, nearly five years after Jackson's previous album, Thriller. Uh, contrary to the name of the album, Bad actually did good. Yeah, I expect that. Yeah, in sales recording. <laughs> Placing at number one on the Billboard Billboard Top Pop Album Charts, Dang. selling over two million copies. That's not true. Well, two million copies in its first week. Okay, that's way. That, that's, that's a way lot. Way. That's first first week. Now, the album also reached number one in 24 other countries, including the UK, where it sold half a million copies in its first five days, wow. and became the country's best-selling album of 1987. Wasn't that bad? It's not bad at all. It's, not, it's, bad it's at all. not bad at all. It's like the total uh, opposite of the title of the album. Familiar songs that are part of this album are obviously bad. Oh, you know. it was a parody by uh, Weird Al Yankovic. Oh, yes. I, I remember that. Uh, the Way You Make Me Feel and then The Man in the Mirror. Man in the Mirror. Shamo! Man in the Mirror. You know what the way you make me feel, JR? I make me feel bad. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. In a good way. In a good way. In a good way. <laughs> All right, word of the day. All right. I keep forgetting to remove the animation of this thing. Yeah. All right, bioluminescence. Okay, that's a long way to spell. Yes, bioluminescence. Uh, well, first before I, oh, you know what? Actually, I have to spell it first. It's B, I, O, L, U, M, I, N, E, S, C, E. N C E. Nice. I hope you guys got that one, but if not, feel free to pause this video and write it down. It's a noun. Okay. It means the light emitted by organisms such as fireflies and other uh, deep sea fishes. Or she fish. Fish. Saw some experiment where they took a gene from a bioluminescent jellyfish and they put it inside a mouse. Gene that the Wait, so, okay, so the mouse uh, lights up? Yes. 
No way. Oh, man. So the gene that makes the animal that glows, right? Glows, yeah. The rats? Not glows. But I, I, I didn't say light up. It sounds like they got burned or something. Yeah. I mean, glows. Yeah, yeah sorry, glowing. They, they emit light from their body. What? It's really interesting. So can we, we do it? So we do have Can we do it as humans? <sighs> that would be so weird. I know, and then you're playing uh, what? Uh, oh my god. <laughs> no, 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 we're, we're playing, uh, what do you call it? Hide and seek? Oh, hide and seek? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You're gonna be seen right away. I'm more talking about the morality of editing or DNA to make us glow. Oh yeah, uh-huh. I, I, I wouldn't uh, want to glow see. anyways. I mean, like, I, I know a lot of uh, people likes to glow, but not in that way. No. It's about to be like shiny and, 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 and smooth. But not, not literally glowing. No, actually glowing. <laughs> There you go. And then, there last we part. There we go. Oh, come on, bro. <laughs> something that has something to do with letter B, we're going to be talking about Blockbuster. Did you guys know that the movie rental company Blockbuster, hopefully you guys still remember it. You guys still remember Blockbuster anymore? Oh, man. That's sad. <laughs> Anyways, the Blockbuster uh, movie rental company tried becoming an amusement park. Can you believe that? What? Uh, <laughs> Even though eventually he turned the company over to uh, other investors, uh, Cook anticipated. Cook is the uh, the the founder right. of the Blockbuster. Okay, uh, anticipated the idea that Black Blockbuster, sorry, Blockbuster. Blockbuster could become more than just a rental outfit uh, when he named the company Blockbuster uh, Entertainment in 1985. So he, he wanted to pivot the company to different other venues besides yeah. rental videos. Of course, yeah. Uh huh. I mean, you expand. Yeah, you try to, to expand. Yeah. Um, in 1994, executives tried to make a good or make good on the label by opening a center dub for Blockbuster Block Party in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, spread over 60,000 square feet, the uh, quote-unquote adult amusement park uh, featured laser tag, mazes, and uh, motion uh, simulator rides. Um, <laughs> I know. I'm so confused right now. Keep going. Keep going. It, it I'm is trying to wrap my brain around. It's this okay. Whole it, is, it is just kind uh, kind of hard to imagine that Blockbuster all actually planned. Imagine if this came into fruition. You know. Who, who thought this was a good idea? It's Cook, okay. not Tim Cook from Apple, but yeah. Cook from Blockbuster. Okay. Okay. Keep going. Uh, the press referred to it as a uh, miniature Disneyland on steroids. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it was, <laughs> so instead of creating a music park, what they should have done was become a party rental company because they still exist to this day. No, you, they don't. Party rental companies, they do. You rent like. No, oh, well, yeah, but I'm talking so about saying, Blockbuster. They should, they, they yeah. should have okay. pivoted in that direction instead of making a. a well, the thing is, the, the concept never get, never caught on. So, you know, nothing to worry about that. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so weird. But if, if you're asking, since you already uh, gave your piece on what they should have done, what I think that they should have done was by Netflix. That is true. Uh, if you guys are not familiar, this is another, uh, what do you call this? Another uh, fun fact. Well, it's not even fun. It's the fact of the day. They had a chance to? They had. They were offered to uh, oh. buy Netflix back in the day where Netflix used to be just an online uh, DVD rental. They don't have the streaming service. Oh, yes. Yet. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Netflix back in the day, uh, you Either call them or go to their website and. Uh, it's like those red boxes machines where you rent the TV. Well, red boxes have physical places. Uh, yeah, yeah, see. Yeah, but, but Netflix, they don't. So you go to their website or you call them and browse their catalog and then uh, order one, but you just literally just rent, rent it, you know? Sounds like a game fly. Remember game fly? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that yeah. one. Like, so like you, a video you, game you, rental. You order it and it ships to your house. When you're done, you ship it back. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. Yeah, so that was Netflix before they got big. And now they were offered to. Uh, to buy Netflix for 50 million. Back that's, that's like a bargain, to be honest. But, well, you know, well, we, we the thing sense, is, yeah. yeah, but the thing is, Cook was a. a S10, Cook, S10. Well, no, here's the thing Blockbuster back in the day, they're like the biggest. They're like the biggest movie, oh, uh, the movie rental. Yeah. yeah, they're the top dog. So uh, if, if you're an underdog, uh, you have to impress your, you know, the thing if you wanna sell your business, right? right? But back in the day, Blockbuster is like the biggest. Movie rental, okay, so they're so like, you know, yeah, that, what, what are we gonna need this for? You know, we're, we're doing fine already, but we need to corporate view, yeah, and then structure. fast well, forward, uh, exactly, yeah. So, fast forward, uh, to this day, uh, you know, uh, they, yeah, we know, they what Netflix is, yeah, and now Netflix, uh, is worth about, if I'm not mistaken, 20 billion, 
now, or it could be more, but yeah. So Blockbuster should become Time Buster and make it time to <laughs> go back and buy Netflix. Uh, if they could, but of course regret always happens in the end, yeah, and yeah. Uh, that's just the 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 what you call, the nature of business. Business, yes. it, you know, a lot of people are saying business businesses are pretty much like gambling to kind of gamble, yes. you know. Um, you but on a certain teeth, sometimes you get rich, sometimes you bust your money. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the uh, the total opposite of what they did for uh, or what happened to Netflix. Right. They were they were the underdog. Right. And then they just uh, go on went on with the technology. Look, like like uh, actors and actresses don't even like sign for for uh, Universal Studios anymore. They they sign through Netflix, you know. So yeah, there you have it. It's amazing. Uh, or maybe uh, do the amusement park. I don't know. <laughs> and that is the end of our show today, guys. Hope you like it. Hope you learned something new. And yes, I'm still gonna say that one because that's my character thing. Uh, don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comment sections that we discussed. Um, what did I say? Oh, let me say that again. Don't forget to leave your thoughts about the topics we discussed in the comment section below. See you next week. See you next week. Wait, no. See you tomorrow with Ian. No, see you next week because your next show will be the letter C. Uh, <laughs> okay, just get <gonna>, up. <laughs>